Hello and welcome to a new episode of Story of Success in which we interview successful Egyptian figures. We'll be back with our guest after the break, so stay with us. Our guest today is a very distinctive character whose life is filled with many exciting adventures and he has been successful in all his endeavors. He worked as an aircraft engineer, a tour guide, he's also a diver and an underwater photographer and he has many hobbies. I'm happy to have with me today tour guide, engineer as well as underwater photographer Mr. Amr Osman who will talk to us about his story of success. Well, uh, Mr. Amr, welcome with us. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask you about uh, your major. Why did you choose uh, to specialize in aircraft engineering? Um, the aircraft technology in general was an amazing thing for me. I was brought up by uh, my father who was a sea captain and uh, the maritime uh, industry was half of our life. So uh, that for me was very interesting, but uh, flying and all the machines that fly were quite an amazing thing for me and that's what drew me to uh, become very interested since maybe the ninth grade. Yes. I'd like to ask you if your family, your father and your mother uh, have uh, affected your career and your choices in life. Um, of course, the, 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 my father and mother were the two most important elements of my life, uh, being the only child to the family. So I had all the attention myself, but yet they have never forced me to do or study uh, a certain thing or science. Uh, but what they did, that uh, they did their very best to teach me discipline and how to bear responsibility and to make my own choices. So that's why when I graduated from high school, um, my choice was to join the Aviation uh, Institute at the time and to master in the uh, Department of Aircraft Engineering with a specialty in jet engines and airframes. Um, and that, of course, uh, was extremely uh, nice for me because uh, the way my father brought me up uh, ended up being the way that uh, aviation was taught. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I was extremely happy and uh, I did very well. Uh, yet I was not very lucky because on the day of graduation and I was the first among the Egyptian uh, students as this was an international institute. Um, the same day of our graduation was the same day of uh, stop hiring in the aviation field. So uh, what truly affected me at that time was the idea of how to bear the responsibility. Being the only child that made me uh, think on one level, which is I'm not going to leave this country or migrate as at the time it was extremely easy for our uh, uh, graduates to migrate anywhere around the world because of our degrees. So my choice to stay in Egypt and to study again, looking for another job uh, instead of the one I really love. And because my mother, who mastered uh, medieval history as a child, most of the child stories I heard was actually about medieval times and the wars and the knights and so on. So studying history for me was something that was uh, quite entertaining. And I was quite used to it as we had a beautiful library at home. And as I grew up, uh, I was always reading about it. That's what encouraged me to uh, join the university once more and study uh, tour guiding of Egypt. And uh, that was quite funny to study engineering and then end up studying something totally on the opposite side of science and uh, working as a tour guide. You worked as a tour guide for almost 25 years. It's not just tour guiding, you were trip uh, the, or tour director as well or as sometimes tour manager, you lectured as well. So out of the many places you visited and you must have visited almost the entire of Egypt, which is your favorite place? Um, still my, my most favorite place is Abydos. And uh, maybe because this is where my uh, mother's family roots come from mm. and my father's family roots come from the oldest of the oldest parts of Cairo. So uh, Old Cairo has always been fascinating for me, Abydos, and as time passed as a tour guide, I asked myself this question and I failed to find a spot because every single spot became my most favorite spot. Now, being a trip leader or tour manager as well as a guide, it's not only about information and language. You need a lot of skills as well, including uh, problem solving. So would you tell us what really uh, the real and best qualifications for a guide or for a person to have to be an excellent guide? To be an excellent guide, you need many elements. Number one, you have to be very disciplined. And discipline here is something that you have to apply and you have to comply with in order to run a professional uh, show. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are disciplined enough, you know that you will have to study very well. And if you study very well and know how to present your own information in an interesting, entertaining and not very boring way, you will capture the hearts and minds of those who are with you or listening to you. But in our job is not just guidance. Guidance uh, in Egypt is part of the job. Being tour directors, we were responsible for everything as the job started the day the group landed on the ground and we used to go to the airport and meet them then escort the group for 24 hours a day for the entire duration no matter how long it gets so with time and of course with lots of training as i was quite fortunate to work for a very big international company who used to summon us for annual trainings all over europe and the world so with time you start developing skills as uh, leading skills, as uh, crisis management skills and so on. But coming from a background uh, of engineering, so crisis management or crisis management was part of my study mm -hmm. and my specialty. So for me, um, it comes as second nature. Yet, if you are a good planner and you respect time and respect your own manual that you work accordingly, so in this case, uh, the possibility to do a very successful job is very high. What was one of the most challenging situations you were placed in as a trip a leader or a tour director? Uh, as a trip leader, of course, we faced all kinds of problems. Uh, but 
in general, it's the human interaction part because not uh, every single tourist that comes to Egypt is in e either uh, medical or uh, capacity that would allow them uh, to travel around a country that has as much as Egypt would offer. So, of course, uh, managing the uh, side or the medical side and sometimes We've had so many experiences with elderly people or even young people who have been involved in um, an accident or uh, medical mishaps. Uh, this was mostly uh, the most uh, difficult part. There were, of course, times with, uh, in the early 1990s and with the Gulf War and the spreading of terrorism around uh, Egypt. Uh, many concerns aroused and uh, we started even uh, studying how to secure our groups how to take care of them, but in general it's dealing with humans and when you deal with humans uh, everything is possible. You are you are also a member of uh, the board uh, at the syndicate of tour guides. Yeah. Uh, now uh, would you tell me about that period of time? Uh, that period of time was quite interesting because when I joined the uh, board of directors for the union um, I had a very clear idea about what I really wanted to do and at the time our union was in shambles so uh, my job uh, that I created for myself there I was the elected treasurer so I was in charge of all the finances I found that uh, our union was in quite uh, a mess so in the same discipline engineering and mathematical way of thinking I wrote the list of all the problems and I came up with a group of solutions so the first thing I did I just created the whole computer system that ended up uh, creating a modern way of management and uh, within the six years that I spent as two-term uh, elected uh, treasurer I managed to pay all the debts and by the time I left um, the union was in very good shape the bank account was quite fat and healthy and uh, we were the very first union in Egypt to have a computerized database and we knew we had every single thing uh, needed to run a proper uh, managerial skill and turn it into a big institution. Now, as a tour guide, you do a lot of lectures. Is that what led you to do uh, conference uh, lecturing? And what type of lectures do you hold at these conferences? Uh, of course, being a tour guide, uh, we were taught, among many things, uh, it's the art of speech and the lecturing and so on. I was quite lucky because my approach to the ancient Egyptian uh, art and science was from a perfect mathematical scientific approach. Mm -hmm. So that gave me an edge, uh, being an engineer, um, this edge was to understand lots of things that are not discussed mostly, like the construction of ancient Egypt, uh, the engineering techniques, their own uh, ancient math, uh, their own ancient physics and science, which are, by the way, all the basis of today's physics and science that we uh, use. But if you want to really be astonished, you really need to go into the scientific side of their life. And that would explain to you how they did everything. And that would be uh, the best way to answer anybody saying that the achievements of ancient Egypt was by eight, done by aliens. With all the respect, it was done by very smart people who loved mathematics, physics and science in general. After more than 25 years of uh, guiding and trip leading, was it easy to stop guiding and start your own business? Um, no, it, it wasn't easy, but it was extremely fun. 
Uh, I remember when I was quite young, I met one of our uh, tourists. So, and my father was a man that I learned from him so much, and he had million hobbies. Uh, so I grew up very much like he uh, was, and um, changing career became it's like wow, fun, another challenge. Let's go for that. When did you start your company? I started it actually as an idea about uh, ten years ago, and. Uh, I kept on researching on my own and reading for almost three years. Then uh, seven years ago, it was a decision I took and I discussed it with my very best friend. And my motive was that after serving for as long as I did as a tour guide, I've seen Egypt inside and out. And I have unbelievable love and appreciation for this uh, nation and my people. And I found that uh, we do have a problem, and this problem is concentrated in the area of civil rescue, especially in the uh, underprivileged areas, poor neighborhoods, uh, small villages. And my decision was to use my engineering uh, ability and to create the very first miniature scale uh, civil rescue units that could do so. But of course it was not easy because the first two attempts, uh, as the whole project took now seven years, and we were the prototype developers and designers, so the first uh, prototype one, two and three came to existence, but we kept on improving. And about three years ago, we, uh, my best friend and partner and myself, we discovered that Egypt has a magnificent new generation of engineers and uh, th that, that was like a fresh breath of fresh air. So uh, I was watching TV and here comes the uh, Helwan University team of engineers, group of young men who entered for the first time the world international competition for student engineering student uh, formula uh, racing cars and I couldn't believe that. Thank God that one of my best friends and di diving buddies was a professor at the university over there. And I contacted him. He facilitated for me the meeting with the dean. And the dean was uh, kind enough to introduce me to the four young men. I was so amazed that uh, with very little they had as uh, a university, they managed to build a, f a student, a formula car. A uh, formula car is one of the most sophisticated pieces of engineering. Mm -hmm. And I met with the young men, I really fell in love with them, and then uh, I decided to share an idea with my partner, is to bring them as partners in the company. And mainly because I'm approaching my 50 as well as my best friend and partner, and they are in their mid-twenties. And if you need to have a successful business, you need to have <coughs> generations. So we adapted them, we gave them uh, each 5% of the total shares of the company for free and they excelled in developing the very first vehicle in the history of the Egyptian engineering that is going to be the first time ever for a vehicle to be used in Egypt designed and built by Egyptians all what happened previously were foreign designs and what not because it's 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 my uh, baby but because we designed it for Egypt, Africa, and the poor world. And our main aim is to help the poor world. So we did everything possible to use as much as we can from the Egyptian products. We even had to spend a fortune developing items that are not being made in Egypt. So we developed it here from scratch. There are, of course, few things that we could not develop and we will have to import. But out of uh, our own list uh, of items for the unit, if we have a thousand items, there are about eight of them to be imported. The rest would be Egyptian. And that's how your new venture, the tricycle, uh, came to life? Absolutely. Yeah, well. And the tricycle is just the, the first thing because um, I've always dreamt of a very long list of items that we can do and uh, designing it for Egypt. That's what really makes it fun. 
Now, I'd like to ask you about it because um, I looked at uh, some of uh, its designs and what you wrote about it, that actually it's meant to go into narrow alleys for people who the average rescue cars or ambulance or even fire truck cannot reach. And you mentioned that the average size or width of these alleys can be up to a meter and a half. That's that means true. that the tricycle has, compartment has to be quite narrow. So would you explain to us a bit about mine? The main idea behind the design that uh, serving as a tour guide for as long as I did, uh, the main thing I noticed around the country, disasters happen, people die simply because the uh, average uh, normal uh, standard of uh, rescue units like fire uh, units or ambulances cannot get into the poor areas. Nowadays we are very happy that our unit is at the university being tested for the scientific uh, approval and we do pray and hope that uh, under the uh, new government and under the new ideas that are going to be used in Egypt and the bettering of uh, the industry we can start our own project. Uh, nowadays the only thing missing for us is a, a major investing company to stand behind us. Uh, and we are quite confident because we've been approached by so many companies. We have had three categories. One is the cargo and the cargo holding, and that could be a simple cargo or a tilting bed cargo unit or a fridge unit so they can haul uh, food products around. As well as the fire uh, units, the three fire units that it, we designed, one is to haul the men with all their gear, one is an extension for power pumps with a very strong power pump, and the third is an elevating unit. So the uh, various narrow alleys when a, a building, an old building, uh, collapses or in case of fire, the biggest problem is to haul all this equipment in. But these units are designed to maneuver and get in there and we equip them with very special uh, high torque engines uh, in order to have the capability to fight even if the terrain is very rough. The third group is uh, mainly for investors 
so that you could turn it into like ice cream stands, sandwich stands, uh, it could carry ATM units. During the summertime, as you know, the Egyptians love to travel to the north coast. Nobody can establish year-round businesses over there, but these small units could travel among the people and provide millions of small services that could be very beneficial for the public. And uh, these are all items that I've gathered since my childhood. I, of course, it became more serious when I started working and having a good income, so I started increasing the collecting hobby as well. I'd like to ask you about your role model. Who's your role model? Uh, absolutely my father. My father was an unbelievable man. Uh, he was a genius. Uh, he had mathematical brains. He could do any kind of mathematical equations in his mind. And uh, he abandoned everything in life just because he loved Egypt so much. So he dedicated his entire life for the Egyptian maritime, civil maritime. And he was among the men who helped shut down the Suez Canal in 1967. And he was the one in charge of cleaning it in 1973 till it was opened. Uh, he created lots of maritime maneuvers still known by his name. And he worked at the very last day of his life. Uh, and he loved every moment of it. So I think my father is my role model. Finally, I'd like to ask you about your dream. My dream is uh, to find the poor people of our country uh, living in better conditions, is to bring uh, more human help to them in their very uh, hard uh, areas. And definitely my dream is to have the first company that uh, the workers would share more than uh, the borders in the province. Well, unfortunately, the time of the episode is up, but thank you very much, Mr. Amr, for this interview, and we'll be continuing in the next episode more about your stories of success. Well, that was Mr. Amr Osman, aircraft engineer, tour guide, trip leader and tour manager, as well as diver and underwater photographer. And by this, we come to an end of this episode of Story of Success. Until we meet again, continuing our episode with Mr. Amr, it's goodbye. <laughs>